What's going on ladies and gents and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and today we're going to be creating a user schema, uh, doing our password authentication or encryption, sorry, non-authentication for right now. So password encryption and uh, doing our registration route. So let's get started because we do have a quite a bit to do. So first of all, let's actually create a, another folder and name this models. This is, this is where all of our models are going to be in and we're going to create a new file and this is going to be the user model oops model.js and we are using mongoose so const mongoose is going to equal require mon damn it i don't i don't want to retype mongoose there you go and one one thing i do want to add in here is another module that we want to use for email validation um so what i want to do is that i want to install a module or a package npmi i dash dash save and this is called email dash validator now, obviously email emails are kind of tricky to validate. So there's already packages out there to do that for us. And we're using them. We're using one of them right now, email validator. And we're going to do a const email valid, validator. God, I, hey man, don't, don't judge email validator. Okay. Now let's create our schema const user schema is going to equal mongoose dot schema. And in here, let's define our, our user schema. So we are going to want a user username and this username is going to have a type of string string it's always go it's also going to be required required so we're going to set that to true and we're going to want to trim it so that way we get rid of any white spaces so true um, the index should be unique so index we're going to set that to a unique property so unique we're going to set that to true Where's the comma? And then we want the min length to be at least three. Let's, let, let's make the username at least three uh, characters long. Now, guys, there's a lot of tons of more properties you could add in here. I encourage you to look up user schemas and just see what you could add in here to make it more, more, uh, uh, I don't know. So that way you can practice. I have no idea. So email, now it's time for Memo. We want an email property. And it's going to be kind of the same thing right here. So I'll copy this, paste it. And the only thing that we're going to add in here, well, there's two things actually. Uh, we want it to be lowercase because if you did not know, uh, emails are in case sensitive. So they don't really care about what they are, uh, uppercase or lowercase. We, so we just want to store it, everything into a lower case. Next thing is let's get rid of the min length. And what we're going to add here is actually the validate. So this is a property that mongoose gives us okay, validate. And we're going to use a function or a property, another property validator, validator. There it is. And what validator do we want to use? We could actually create our own or just use a built in module, which I mean, a module that we installed, which we are, and we're going to be using the email validator dot validate. And if something goes wrong with that, like there is not, I mean, that that email is completely wrong. Something's wrong with the email. Well, we're going to just give a what to call a little message. Let's say props. Ugh. Props 
dot value. So is not a valid email address. There you go. So basically our validator is going to be our email validator. And if something's wrong, it's going to be passed in as props and we're just going to get the value of the props and just give a message saying that, Hey, uh, it's not a valid email whatsoever. And last but not least is our password, which is going to be almost exactly the same thing for username. The only difference is that, well, there's not really a difference. It's just the min length. I want it to be eight. We want at least, you know, common standard to be eight. And last but not least is we want to add timestamp. Oops. Time stamp stamps. We're going to set that to true. So that way we have a property in every user for created ad and updated ad. So it will give us exactly the time step for those things. All right. Now that we have our user schema, let's just module export that module dot exports. It's going to equal mongoose dot model and what model well we want to we want to name it user and what is the schema attached to this is the user schema control save this now <clears throat> let's actually quickly test this to see if um it worked or not and i do have another one another test script so that way we could do it so let's try mpx mocha and this is going to be inside of test server models user user model dot test dot js and like i said you could check what we're doing always inside of there the test server and all that stuff and oh there we go we have one failing which is should reject a too short password i'm wondering why Oh, that's why it's in, it's still an inside email. I forget. Uh, that's why. Let's get rid of this. So this email is right there, and what we want to do is add a comma right there, and then paste that right there. So if it was inside email. That's why. Okay, now let's try it out. Control C. See, this is why we have test scripts, which is pretty handy. And there we go. Now everything is passing great. Now let's create methods or, uh, yeah, methods for our, uh, bcrypt to encrypt our password. Cause as we all know, it's kind of bad to just store password as just a plain old string. So let's, let's do that right now. All right. So for that, we're going to be using, let me go, uh, bcrypt. So npm I'm dash dash save bcrypt. JS. I'm going to be using bcrypt JS, which is exactly the same thing, but for some reason, bcrypt for me does not work. So I'm just using bcrypt JS. Okay. Um, let's just do npm audit fix. So that way. All right. Anyway, when that's running, let's go over here and just use const. I'm going to call it b. Yeah. B crypt is going to equal require. Uh, uh, bcrypt, bcrypt.js. Yes. <clears throat> and if you haven't met, well, it, you should already know bcrypt at this point. So I'm not going to spin it. We do need a number of round salt or salt round. So I'm going to create a cons salt rounds. And we're going to set that equal to 12 just to make it a little bit harder. You could set it a bigger number, but obviously the bigger number, the, the uh, longer it takes. So down here, Let's create methods for that. Now we're going to use a pre hook. We're going to use a pre hook for the, uh, saving a password right before. All right. So what do I mean? Well, user user schema dot pre, and then what do we want to do before we actually save? So the event is save async function 
and we're going to call it oops we're going to call it pre save passing in next so this right here whatever we put in here is going to actually run right before we actually save the user which is what we want to do before that is encrypt or hash our password okay so that's what we're going to be doing right here and we need to use a actual function name and not the arrow function the reason why because we we need the this keyword so yeah const and this is why user we're going to refer user to this the actual object being saved right now now if you're using fat or up op, fat arrow um, functions you wouldn't be able to do this that's why we need the function and not arrow functions okay so if first of all I am going to check if the user or the password is modified meaning that they want to reset the password or they want to do something different with the password then what we want to do is if it's not modified meaning if it's not modified then just go straight to next but if they're modifying it like they want to reset the password then we want to uh, hash that again but right now I'm just checking if the password was not modified okay so if user dot is modified modified and what it, what, it, what are we looking that it was modified well we're looking for the password so if user if the password was not modified then what we want to do is just return turn next Other than that, we're going to try because we are using async. So we're going to do a try catch. Catch. Catch with an error. Oh. And if there is an error, we're going to return to get this out of the way. Return next with the error inside of it. All right. So let's go to the try block. So first of all, let's create a const and we're going to say hash and we're going to set this equal to await because we're going to be using the bcrypt. There it is. bcrypt.hash. What, what do we want to hash? Well, we want to hash our user dot password, whatever they passed in. And we want to use the salt, the salt rounds that we set up upstairs, salt rounds. Uh, next user dot password we're going to set that equal to the hash we just created and then when all is set and done we're going to return next what's going to happen next is obviously we're going to be saving it so this is happening right before it saves and then they're going to save it this is what the next is just head on to actually saving the user all right, now that we have our save method or yeah, to hash our tables, now we need to make a method for comparing our passwords, okay? Now, this isn't a we don't we need to actually make a method. And but we're going to be attaching it to the user schema. So anywhere where whenever we call the user schema, we could actually say user schema.compare password so that way we could compare our passwords without you know actually fetching the, the 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 password from our database and you know comparing it to what it is right now you know what i'm talking about right so user schema dot methods we're going to attach it to the methods property and you can call it whatever you want i'm gonna call it compare compare password password and we're going to set that to a async function obviously and it does need to be a function again. I'm going to compare, compare password. And we do need to pass in the user password. And then right here, we're going to return bcrypt.compare user password with this dot password. Now, again, this is why we're using the function instead of the arrow functions, because we are using the this keyword, which refers to the object or 
yeah to the object that just called this method so yeah so once we compare it it's going to return a true or false and that's that now let's control save this and lucky for you guys i do have a uh npx a script that will help us welcome to test this out without actually you know testing it out going making a registration doing all that so npx we're gonna test server models user models dot test no it's not dot test no more it's dot password dot test or te dot test dot password dot js and hopefully everything goes right right here Ooh yes so let's just check what we're actually testing we're just testing if we could actually create a user with valid data which is correct we can just store the password encrypted which is correct and should be able to correctly uh validate a password which it is so awesome we're, we're we're ready to go to actually create our registration route let's do that right now so if we head over to routes and then users index.js this is our registration uh routes and as you can see right now we only have one route for our registration which is a git route which is just going to render our registration route now let's actually take a look at that right now let's go to views users uh registration for our form when they fill out the form they're going to be going to users slash registration okay so we need to make a post route with this uh route or with this url okay so let me just copy this so that way i don't make a mistake and guys i really the reason i'm not going over the uh, gits is because the gits are pretty common and you should know exactly what's going on here little things like this i will explain like why am i adding this or where is this coming from so don't worry about it i will explain those when once the time comes so let's just make our route for um post so router.post and what is the URL? Well, God, I did that wrong. Let's go back over here, copy that again, paste the, let's copy this, copy, paste. Okay, all right, now, now we gotta actually do it. And we're gonna be using async right here because we are going to be, uh, we, are, we are going to be needing to save data to the Mongo, which is, and a wait kind of thing. So async rec res and then next. This shouldn't be new to you whatsoever. We've already explored that. And obviously once you do an async, nope, you want to do a try catch block with the error. And if there is an error, return next with the actual error. All right, now let's focus on the try. So for the try, we're gonna be saving our user to the database, and for that, we actually need the models, the user model. So we do need to install that up here. Const user model model. We're gonna set that equal to require. up one and up another one inside models slash user model all right cool now we could actually create a user so const user is going to equal new user model and we need to pass in the username email and password so user name we're going to set that to rec rec dot body dot user name and you could always check what i named it if you just go back over here as you can see our username is actually called username email and password let me actually copy this copy paste and then one more so our username is now going to be the email and then this is going to be password. So once we have our user or our model for that, we do need to save it. So const saved user, and we're gonna just set that equal to await. 
user sewer <laughs> user dot save this is where we're actually going to save it so once we have a saved user we're going to check if that was success or not so if saved user what we want to do is return a res not a res dot redirect we want to redirect them to the forward slash users for slash register oh well right here and then we're gonna add a parameter success equals true and the reason why we're adding this parameter is because if you check right here on our git registration oh by the way i made a mistake it's not slash users it's just slash registration because if you go to index we're actually right here once we require our users folder which is our index right here we're actually pre-appending slash users so we don't have to do that inside users sorry about that anyways once we uh we once we redirect them with this um parameter or the query string right success equals true up here since we're using it right here success and we're going to be using this inside of the template you could check the template out but if there is a success and we grab the success from the rec doc query doc success right if it's true then we're going to just give them a message if it's false then we're going to give them another message but anyways if we actually saved a user we're going to return uh, or redirect them to that and then if else we're going to return return next with the arrow so new error failed Is that how you, yeah, that's how you spell failed. Failed to save user for unknown re reasons. Now, obviously, right here, you do want to uh, give an error of like what was the actual reason. Well, not into detail. It's just saying that hey, that email was already used or it incorrect password you don't you want to give them a, a, a generic message right um because you don't want the hackers to give to get too much information so if you say like something around the lines of email is already in use which is great that's that's, that's actually a good one you, you've seen that pretty uh you've seen that so many times but you can't say a password was wrong that would mean that the email is actually valid and the password is wrong for that email so the hackers will try to you know retry to do the password every single time you just want to say email or password was incorrect like that okay <laughs> all right now that we have this control save we could actually test it out with mocha one more time before we actually run it okay so npx mocha oops x mocha test server routes users index dot no it's not account i don't know why it auto completes right, okay index dot registration dot test dot js so in this one we should have everything passing hopefully hopefully awesome awesome two are on passing which basically is should return an error of 500 with empty request and should show a success message after successful registration i misspelled successful but that's fine all right, now that we know that it's actually running or everything's good, we could actually npm start this and check it out. Let's go to localhost 3000. Let's go to our register route and let's just register, all right? So name wdj, email wdj at gmail.com and password is going to be password. And try to remember your email and your password uh, so that way you know exactly uh, what it is because we are going to be using these. You create new ones if you want to, but that's just a hassle. Submit and thank you for your registration. And we could actually check this in mongodb.com. Sign in. Log in with Google. I was thinking, I don't know why. And once you logged in with Google, uh, you should have your cluster right here. We could go to collections and inside of our... Well, let's, let's just wait until this is 
retrieving list. I don't know why it's taking a while. It shouldn't be taking this long. Hmm. I'll come back to you once it's done uh, retrieving the list. So hold up. And voila, we have our user wdj at gmail.com with our password, this random password and created that and updated that, which is awesome. Well, guys, that was it for this video. It was a little bit fast, but it was all the things that we've already been through. It was just some, some of the things were different, you know, just saving, you know, having those creating a method. But other than that, it was pretty much all the same. So that's why I just sped, sped through all this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, please hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already to keep up with me and my videos. Now, in the next in the next video, we're actually going to be authenticating uh, users, okay? Or in the next few videos, we're going to be authenticating an authorizing user, meaning we're going to be using cookies and sessions and passport, okay? So. Stay tuned for that, guys, if you're actually looking for that kind of stuff. So thank you, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.